Welcome to Janice Edwards TV, Bay Area Vista. I'm Janice Edwards, and I'm so glad that you're joining us here today. And I'm excited about our guests who are with us, award-winning co-founders of Pajama Studios and Gardner Music Mentoring. Paula T. Lander and James Gardner are with us. Now, you may remember we did a couple of Bay Area Vistas at Pajama Studios years ago, one with Miko Marks and one with Paula and Brenda Vaughn for My Sister's Keeper, which was a fundraiser. Now, recently in the HBO documentary, Listening to Kenny G, Kenny G gave credit to his mentor, James Gardner, because years ago in Seattle, it was James who saw his talent and really provided his first opportunities for performing. Recently at Yoshi's, Kenny thanked James when he was in the audience. Here's what he had to say. Big band charts, they were special charts. And the same guy was such an inspiration. I can tell you this, if it wasn't for him, I don't think either one of us would be here, I mean, he was our, he was not necessarily, he wasn't our high school band teacher. He was like this, the public schools hired a, uh, what they called it a composer in residence. So the guy came to our high school, out of all the high schools, he came to our high school. He inspired us. And if, I'm telling, seriously, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be standing here. He's here tonight. So I, we, we have to pay homage to Jim Gardner. Jim Gardner, where are you sitting, my brother? Where are you? There he is right there. Right there. And that's what that's what happens. You get people like us that get a chance to have beautiful lives because of a guy like that. So that's awesome. Jimmy, glad you're here. <laughs> well, he was glad James was there. And we are so glad that James and Paula are here with us. Hello, thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you after all these years. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Janice. We are thrilled to be here, James and I. Definitely. Thank you, Janice. Yes. Congratulations. And James, you know, you're so modest. I knew when I came to Pajama Studios that you had so many people that you two had worked with. And we'll see a little clip of Beyonce from back in the day in a little while. But I had no idea of all of the people. And this documentary is so phenomenal. It's so moving to see the connection that you two have had. Let's talk a little bit about how that started years ago in Seattle because you were the composer in residence and you saw this young man. What was it about him that stood out for you? It, it was his uh, humbleness and his eagerness to just want to learn. I would write something out and he would never say, no, I couldn't do it. So he would just do it. So I kept on writing more and more material for him. And then uh, he started to apply all of, you know, you know, all of that knowledge. And then went to a Grover Washington concert and noticed that Grover was uh, circa reading. So I said, uh, if you can come back in a week to the band room and do that, you'll get this gig, you know, at the opera house, you know, as a soloist in my professional band. And that's how all of that actually, you know, happened, you know, came oh together. My gosh. And it's, it's so incredible. And then through the years to see how his music just took off. I, I know in the documentary, he shares that story about going on to Johnny Carson. So did you two stay in touch after you helped, you helped him also perform with Barry White at one point? Ever so often, you know, us from Seattle, even my sisters and brothers, we may not talk for six years, but it's almost like we never left, you know? <laughs> so when I see Kenny, it's like, it's, He's still 17 years old. I mean, you know, he's still <laughs> little G man working and studying, and his attitude is exactly like he was when he was 17. Same 
work ethic. You know, I mean, he's obsessed. You know, he's been bitten by that musical bug. Wow. And, and it's great. And Paula, it was so wonderful to connect with you again because you guys were in New York for the premiere of the documentary. And to see all of this unfold, uh, what has this meant for you? This has been an amazing journey to finally see both Kenny and James come together. Uh, it all started, well, many years ago with them, but the, the joy of finding out about this film, listening to Kenny G, and the opportunity of Penny Lane, the director, who did a brilliant job. She's an amazing filmmaker. And her producing partner, Gabriel Sedgwick, who contacted us. Mm -hmm. And then the thought after Penny actually spoke to James, she said, you know what? You need to be in this film. And the blessing just unfolded from there. We went down to Los Angeles and there was a full day of taping of James. And then the next day they surprised us and said, Kenny wants to have the next part filmed at his estate. And to see James and Kenny be reunited, there's a section in the film that's really beautiful where James is walking up to Kenny's house. And even Kenny mentioned that how emotional that was for them. And it was just beautiful it to see. It brought tears to my eyes when I saw it. So I could only imagine being there, what that was like. Yeah, it's funny, though, because it's always that way with all my uh, ex-band members. You know, uh, we were in the trenches trying to be number one high school jazz band, in, you know, in the country. So, so we won Reno Jazz Festival three years in a row, and no group had ever done that. All these kids are all minorities and that was new too you see so the amount of work you know and determination you know still carries over today and and actually none of the students actually have forgotten the amount of work and heart that it took to actually do that and and a, a, a kenny was exactly like that then and he's that way right now Thing is, is that uh, if you say, tell Kenny, you can't do something, you're in trouble because he's going to come back and actually show you, show you that he can. <laughs> I heard him say that and, and I heard you say that. And, and, you know, that really speaks to artists, I think, in general, in many ways, right? Because you have to love this. And I'm going to ask you and Paula, you may want to give us a little bit of the history of how Pajama Studios came to be because... I'm sure people told you, oh, you can't do this at some point. And you had the vision for working with artists. How did it all begin? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it started, actually, we opened the doors in 1993. And prior to that, we, we started working together. And I asked James, I said, James, you know, if you had an opportunity, would you open up another studio? When What would it look like? What what would be the name? And I remember we were both just sort of turned to each other serendipitously. And we both said the name pajama. And then I said, well, now that we have a name, where would this facility be? And so we went into Oakland and we found this live work loft space here in Jacqueline and square a year and a half later, we opened the doors in 93, got on the cover of mix magazine an international trade magazine, which was such a blessing. And we did a grand opening party. And the next day, I mean, the who's who, ABC, NBC, CBS, all the media was there. People flew in from all over the country to grace us. And it was a celebration of not only our opening, but uh, Mix Magazine. Right. And there was a very amazing thing that happened the next day. This gentleman walks into the facility and he said, could you please give me a tour? I flew in all the way from Washington, D.C., went to L.A., and now I'm here. And he toured the place. And within 48 hours, we received a really amazing uh, cashier's check that kept us going. And this gentleman that we didn't even know who he was, really, after 10 years of working with us, he says, you know, I want to invite you to a premiere of a film. And it was called Talk to Me. And it was Dewey Hughes. He was the founder with Kathy Hughes of One Network. And he came to us. And because of Dewey, you know, we're still here today. It's like... You're right. There's always people who are going to say you can't do it. And my my saying is never give up because <laughs> dreams matter. You know? Yes, dreams do matter. And speaking of dreams, you also 
were hosting Beyonce. She recorded in your studio and you have a clip here from what you've produced. We're going to take a look at that now. <laughs> so it's not too much any different than the In Vogue girls. And her mom would come and just sit there, you know, and she had that mm -hmm. Kenny G smile and mm -hmm. just did it did it and did it and did it and said yeah is there anything more that's the, what you need she never used the word i can't she was 14 i think going on 15 and when she came here she was alone she was the singer the whole vision that her parents had was always about beyonce so they had the other girls around her but we only saw the main girl and that was beyonce and she was very quiet very shy but when she stood on that mic she commanded respect. She just sang, sang from her heart. <laughs> That's incredible. So you saw her in the beginning. And tell us about that in terms of seeing where she is now. Do you stay in touch at all? No, I mean, not really. I mean, um, kind of, you know, indirectly. I mean, at some event in New York or, or something. But... but not really, not really. You know, everyone kind of, we do our thing and then we do another thing, <laughs> you right. know, so. And, and she came to us actually through um, Dwayne Wiggins. Okay. He is a uh, Tony, producer. Tony, Tony. Yes, he was from the Tony Tonys and he was producing yeah. her. And so when she came here, she was like only 14 years old. And we did their first album when she was with the group Destiny's Child. And like a lot of artists who are up and coming, you know, they're they're still finding their way. They're still very humble. And and one thing about Beyonce, she's an, a great performer and she's maintained that sense of integrity throughout her whole career. So, you know, uh, it's a blessing either way. Yes, it's incredible. And I know the last time that I was in studio with you, I met a young man who was one of your first mentoring students, because in addition to Pajama Studios, as you established it, you have established the Gardner Music Mentoring. So tell me about that. And I know that Miko Marks, who recorded with you, is now second generation with Pajama because her son has been part of your program, <laughs> correct? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Actually, it all started with our interview here at Pajama Studios for Miko Marks. And that's how you and we met you, Janice. Yes. And that taping young Tyler Combs, which was the mentoring student, was there from that relationship with Miko Marks, which is doing fabulous now. Her star has just risen. Um, we did an EP for her and we met her young son. He was like only 14 at the time. His name was Justin Hawkins. He goes by Jay Hawk, Justin J. Hawk Hawkins, an amazing guitarist. And he studied with us for four years and then went on to go to the University Academy of Art and, and got a degree in music. And now he's the guitarist for Duckworth, uh, a singer rapper. And also he is the band uh, director and leader for another group called the Ghetto Boys Music wow. Group. Oh my gosh. What do you do to specifically nurture talent? Because there's so many stories of people who were talented, who had a dream, but they never got the support that was needed to go to the next level. What's involved with specifically nurturing that musical gift in someone? You know, one of the biggest keys, and I remember when I was learning the instrument, is that you're naturally at a certain level musically in terms of what you hear, the key that you vibrate harmonically. And a lot of, most times, you know, uh, in school, you start, you know, in a lesson book. Well, suppose one student is naturally far more advanced than that. You need to take that student where they are and move them at, from that point into the future and write out their exercises for them. You can't go just by the book. You've got to, you know, throw away the books and and, and open up a whole nother world, you know, with, with melodies, you know, and help them define where melody is, you, you know, create melodies and then create the harmonies, you know, and then add all the colors and stuff. And a lot of times we get caught up, you know, in wanting to know you know the names of things and really you'll lose a, you'll lose a student that way 
you know, when they don't need to know that. Maybe. That's what what happened with, with Kenny, it, because uh, we may start off with Charlie Parker, but that wasn't his time period. You see, so I don't want to waste too much time going back, at, you know, into history and say, well, you got to do the blues, that, 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 you know. So, you know, where he was at, they were all, you know, into that new Grover Washington sound, you know, the R&B, you know, an instrumental thing, Jeff Lorber and, and, and all of them. So that's what they needed to hear. One of the other students, by the name of Philip Wu, you know, mm-hmm. very famous in, yes. in Japan, who played, you know, with Frankie Beverly Mays and, you know, Gladys, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> Gladys, <laughs> I mean, just, just about every R&B artist, you right. know, came through that same, same situation. Matter of fact, you know, uh, we did a concert in Portland and, and Philip was playing. Harold Rhodes, the owner of Fender Rhodes, donated a Fender Rhodes keyboard to Franklin High School just because, mm-hmm. you know, of what Philip did with that when he was playing in that group. And so so then the band got his first Fender Rhodes piano. I mean, it was a very poor school. Oh, know? my gosh. How incredible. As soon as Philip graduated, last time I saw him, you know, he was going like, Mr. Gardner, I'm getting on a bus and I'm mm-hmm. going, you know, and I'm joining Roy Ayers band. Roy yeah. Ayers picked up the 17 year old kid and took him right out of the band room, right onto the road, and the rest was history. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, all of the people that you have mentored. So, James, to go back to the story, but how did you first develop your your musical gift, and who mentored you? Oh, gosh, you know, I was a, a big product, you know, of the Seattle School District. So, you know, uh, my main instrument at the time was trombone. So uh, the, the band teacher took me under his wing and recommended me to a lady by the name of Lulu Fairbanks because she wanted to sponsor an inner city kid, you, you know, so they sponsored me. So then because of that, I was going to, to the corner school of, of the arts, you know, you know, learning composition at, you know, in the ni- you know, ninth grade, I'm doing going to school and going to the conservatory. Then I'm in the youth symphony orchestra, you know, I'm playing, I'm, but my teacher was the principal trombonist with the Seattle symphony orchestra. So they all knew me, you know, as a kid. So when I grew up older, I started putting my own band together. Then I got a scholarship to the Berkeley School of Music, you know, and I won the Downbeat Hall, Hall of Fame scholarship mm-hmm. for composition. I was going to do that until a friend of mine said that there's a composer from Russia that just moved to Seattle by way of, you know, L.A., who was working with Lionel Shefflin. Okay. So he took me on, you know, as his only student. And I studied with him for four years, you know, and because of that, the number one thing was that you always got to get out of the line of where everyone else is going and create your own line. So I created, yeah. so he helped me create my own line. But because of that, I, w- I was commissioned to do two two works for the Seattle Symphony Orchestra, you see. And then Herbie Hancock comes by and puts his hand on my shoulder and says, this is going to be for Seattle School District, University of Washington, this is going to be your composer in resident, James Gardner. Herbie had never wow. heard anything I had done. You know, oh he, just, he just said, this is going to be your composer in residence. To this day, Herbie doesn't know because he did that. He helped me put my hand on Kenny on Kenny Gorlick's or Kenny G shoulder. You see, mm. so then wow. all that smooth jazz stuff happened. Yeah. <laughs> so so this the whole thing gets really very deep, real 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 quick. And what was so powerful about that is that you know James. You know, a young kid was following Herbie. Herbie was, you know, with Miles. And Herbie happened to be in town in Seattle. And in those days, there were no gatekeepers. So James found out where Herbie was staying. And he called the hotel. And Herbie answered. And he says, look, I have a chart that I've written for you. It's titled My Friend. 
And he said, I'd like to bring it to you. So Herbie says, yeah, come on over, kid. And he knocks on the door. He walks into his hotel suite. And Herbie literally puts his hand on his shoulder, walks into this beautiful lounge where all these suits and businessmen and women are there to entertain Herbie to have him become the composer in residence. Right. Now, James had in a manila folder his chart. Herbie never saw the chart. He just said, you know, this is the kid that should be the composer in residence. So wow. that beautiful day, like serendipitously. So this is, it's been like a laying on the hands. Yeah. James laying his hands on Kenny and look where Kenny is. Right time. Yeah. Right place. Yeah. And even we never speak about is Robert Damper, oh, yeah. who was mm -hmm. a trumpet player in the band. Then James said, no, you need to play the piano, who became Kenny's music director and still is his music director today. So. I'm going to still stay on this little mode about our, us high school friends because we not only did all those things, played all those festivals, been around the world, been on the road for, you know, 25 years together. We've also played at the White House together. We shared a special moment when President Clinton invited us to play a dinner for the president, his cabinet, and all 50 governors from all 50 states. And we went there and did it. And it was the coolest thing. We got to the White House. And then you, you see a menu of what's going to happen for that evening. And the menu goes, an appetizer of young asparagus grown in the state of Iowa <laughs> under the governorship of whatever, whatever. And then blah, blah, blah. And it says, musical selections, Robert Damper and me. Our names were on the menu. For the rest of his wow. life. Yeah, his one and only gig. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, because see, Robert was a Clifford Brown jazz trumpet player. But I noticed that you know his teeth that weren't doing so well, and it was going to be difficult for him to be able to actually do this. So I come to the band room, and the kid is playing the piano as if he was McCoy Tyner. You know, I said, "Dude, you are going to be the keyboard player." So for the rest of his life, he became a keyboard player. And that's the job that him and Kenny have. And Kenny Robert is Kenny G's musical director. And so when so when they were giving tribute to you, it wasn't just Kenny, but Robert there as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, so it's it's really like family time. You know, <laughs> so we all have a big story to tell. You know. Yes. It's so yeah. incredible, so inspirational. And now the music industry has changed so much. Even Kenny was talking about how he's had to reinvent himself and, and you are continuing to mentor others. I know you have a number of up and coming artists there working with you now. Paula, who's on your roster? Well, we have a young lady. Her name is Zinya Z. And she started with us actually as a mentoring student. She was 11 years old and from Las Vegas, and now she's like 19. So over these years, she'd been coming just once a week, recording, doing vocals. She's a singer songwriter. And so we've been developing her, um, James doing the music production. I work with them in that. And then I've been working on her imaging and producing and directing these shoots. And we've we've paired up with um, Culture Zine Music Group, who uh, teaming their artists together. They sent an artist over, uh, which we're working with well, as her name is China Gray, China Gray. and from yeah. Chicago. And she came in and sang this wonderful ballad that James produced. So along with Zinya Z, who's more of a pop rock artist and China Gray, an R&B artist, these are just two acts. There's other artists that we're working with as well. And our goal is to pool our, our efforts together and we're in negotiations now with the labels to do a label deal and where we're going to now have from we come from pajama studio being the studio that records all the recording artists to gardener music mentoring that mentors the artist and now the new evelation is pajama music group which will be our new label that will be then distributing the artists through relationships with the majors and having international and uh, a worldwide distribution along with our partner culture zine. So we have a big vision for the future in 2022 and on. Yeah. This is so exciting. And you also have done a collaboration with NASA called Movie Minty. And we're going to take a look at that right now. <laughs> No, 
Paula and James, there's so much to talk about. I've been so excited to reconnect with you. I'm so grateful to you because I remember how you opened your studios for me, not only to do the shows where we interviewed you and Miko, but other shows at Pajama Studios as well. And you also have Touch Tone Productions. Tell me a little bit about that before we go. Okay. Now, Touch Tone goes all the way back to the mid 80s. And one artist that I started out with and developed, you know, helped to develop a lot immensely was Nikita Jermaine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no one knew her. And we worked every day, you know, and I mentored her. And so we got a record deal, you know, uh, you know, like $7 million deal or something, you know, uh, for Nikita Jermaine and stuff, you know. So, so that's uh, how, Motown. yeah, at Motown. Yeah. So, so because, so then all the background sing, singers, Sandy Griffith, all the back, background singers, you know, uh, like all the in Vogue girls, you Sukai. know, Sakai, all yeah. of them were my background singers, you know, wow. on the demos that I, I was making. The Tony Tonys were downstairs in my other studio recording and they were just getting started out at the same time at the same time you know another mentoring person that i helped mentor was rosie Gaines, mm -hmm. and we did yes. a lot of a lot of songs you know just right the and then and i know and that's how stuff. we wound up doing the show mentioning the as a preview for the benefit for rosie as well oh, yeah, we yeah, 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 to yeah. You lift her up and, oh, yes and of course she's so famous for diamonds and pearls with prince yes, with well. prince yeah exactly. prince. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh it's, it's always a, thr a thin thread between all of us yes the, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The whole that we, we are connected and i'm yeah. so glad that we had a chance to connect i can't believe our time has flown by like this but oh my oh, goodness gosh. <laughs> so many stories it's so rich and i just want to thank you so much for all that you're doing for all the great music that you've produced in the world for the mentorship for the friendship too so grateful so thank paul you. and James, thank you so much for being yeah, with merry christmas today. Yeah. Merry, yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year as well. And we want to let everybody know if you'd like to contact Gardner Music Mentoring, it's GardnerMusicMentoring.com. And that's where you can find out about everything that's going on and take your next step if you're an aspiring artist as well. So thank you again. Thank you guys so thank much. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Much love. Much love. Yes. Yeah. And I want to thank you for joining us as well. I'm Janice Edwards. If you'd like to reach us, it's thejaniceedwards.com or our YouTube channel, TV Janice Edwards. And that's our show. I'm Janice Edwards. And thank you for all that you do to make our world a better place. Please join us again next time. And we pray that your holidays are filled with blessings and dreams coming true. Have a happy new year. Janice.